Continuing on then, let's build our own labyrinth. And we're going to call it a leap of faith. And we're going to have the base template. So, who remembers Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark? One of the best caps to a trilogy in cinema history. Alright, let's open up scene settings. Get us a skybox that's a little bit brighter, make it a little bit easier to see things. Um, and I think I'm going to go with a Milky Way look again. And we're going to turn the... Whoops. Going to turn the fog off. There we go. Hmm, this is the same one I have as my experience though, isn't it? Do we have a... Do I... That's the only, that's the only skybox I have. Alright, we're just going to use the same skybox again. It's okay. We can change that easily. That's not the main thing here. And we are going to uh, leave this plane here for now, but I'm going to move it down a little bit so it's out of the way. But this is just going to help us with the kind of testing phases. And then we are going to use this object built for me by Old Vamp. So thank you very much, Old Vamp. You built me this completely invisible platform. So I'm going to go to the visibility tab here at the top. And I'm going to go physics shapes. And now you can see it. So you can see the plane here. And then here is my stretch of invisible platform. So Raiders of Lost Ark. Why was I talking about the greatest cap to a movie trilogy of all time? Because you remember the test of faith. He's doing the free trials to get to the Holy Grail. There's the Penitent Man and the uh, Buzzsaws. And then there's the spelling out, um, spelling out of the name on like jumping across the letters, and then there's this impossible leap, where you obviously can't get across this gap, but if you actually you he takes this leap of faith, and actually it's this clever optical illusion where there is a bridge there, you just can't see it, um, which I never felt like was much of a trap. I feel like you'd just be like, well, all right, and you just walk forward. Like, you'd either just give up and walk back at that point, or you would find the bridge, because you just have to walk directly on top of it. Because <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> um, or just stand at a slightly different angle. But this is this is where my idea comes in, is we're going to have these in, this invisible maze, a little bit similar to the Versailles. We're going to have an invisible maze, but instead of invisible walls, the platforms are going to be invisible. <laughs> So you're going to spawn, let's move the spawn back, you're going to spawn and then in the center there's going to be this glowing trophy and you're going to be like, oh, well I guess I just walk towards the glowing trophy and then you fall and you go, okay, that wasn't it. So you've got to try and figure out the path and uh, maybe you think you're about to, just about to get there and then, oh, it teleports you to the other side and now you're in a different part of my maze that you've got to walk through. And... Because, you know, we've got to try and hit some of those creative and interactive points. Definitely want to try and do some things where there's like, uh, you know, you walk through and it turns off the lights. We can try and set up some triggers like that. Um, all kinds of things. So right up until the deadline of this contest, I'm going to be trying to make this as interesting and as possible of a maze labyrinth experience that could be worthy of being submitted. If it was allowed to be submitted, which it won't, sadly. But maybe I'll get an overall mention. Maybe I'll get to be on Sans Art Top 5, you know, or Atlas Hopping with Drax. You know, those would, those would also be pretty good. Okay, so here is Plank 1. How are we on height? That seems pretty good. Okay, so we're going to hit Control D, duplicate it, and we're going to bring it out a bit. And then we'll do it one more time. We'll leave a little bit of overlap. And then here, I guess just off its end, we will have our object that we're running towards. So, what shall that object be? What shall it be? I have a lot of rocks right now in my inventory. A lot of rocks. And a plate and a fire. I think we're going to go with the animated Spear of Destiny. I'm afraid I can't remember who made it right now, but definitely this thing is pretty cool looking kind of glows and rotates, kind of plays to the Indiana Jones themes. Yeah, why well, don't... I never did the Spirit of Destiny in Indiana Jones. They had the Ark of the Covenant, but 
Spear of Destiny, central central point to to Hellboy. Um, I'm not sure actually how how interested Nazi archaeologists were in the Spear of Destiny or the Ark of the Covenant. Um, never really came up when I was studying history. All right, so we're gonna. Do you know why am I dragging this around? Let's open up its properties, and we're gonna make it zero zero zero. So it's now dead center. It's dead center in the experience. And we'll just raise it up a bit. And we need to put a visible platform underneath it. So that you can see, okay, that's where I've got to get to. So let's uh, see if I've got some good... F nope. That's a bit much. It's a little bit much. A bit much of rock formation. So... We've got our uh, our trophy that we've got to get to, trying to make point B obvious. And I'm trying to find a good rock to put underneath it, a good rocky platform. I'm actually just going to turn off uh, physics shapes for a while so I can see things a little bit clearer. Uh, that's pretty gross looking. Rock D? Eh. Rock A. More for... Um, hmm, not very platformy, is it? Let's have a look. So I've got some gnarly rocks, got some other rocks. <laughs> Just a whole, a whole lot of rocks. We've got rock heroes. I'm not sure why they're called rock hero. Ooh, that one's kind of, kind of cool looking. Is it just one with a flatter edge? Do you know what? Maybe we should just go with by most used item and that's rock platform. So thanks Silas. Um, I, uh, I've used a lot of rocks in a lot of my experiences. You may have noticed all the mountains in Dota World. Um, but there are very few rocks that have a flat edge to them that actually mean you can stand on them and that's where this rock platform comes into a lot. Again, I am moving it instead of just making it the same position by making this coordinate zero zero zero. Alright, so let's just make this a little bit bigger. Let's make it... Well, let's also make it not that big, but 1.2. Drag it down a little bit. And let's give it a light so it's kind of luminescent. Sister, uh, oh wait, I'm still searching. That's why it's not showing anything up. S purchased... Sis system all. Oh, there we go. Aha. Uh -huh. Sorted it point light right here give me that zero 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 okay maybe not that much zero 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 a little bit more there we go okay let's uh i guess a kind of a green light maybe a bit more cyan -y. and then intensity up and range uh maybe maybe only 100 that might help give you a clue on when you're close or not so and as you can see, we can't see our transform platforms unless we have uh, physics shapes here. So let's bring out another one. Let's make its rotation 90, so it's a nice solid right angle. And we'll drag it up like that. And we're going to save, we're going to build, and we'll take a quick look at how, how this looks right now. So... Real simple version. Now, obviously, if it's completely invisible platforms, this might be a bit much. Um, probably want something... Yeah, this is completely invisible. And that's what I had in mind originally, but maybe that's a bit much. Maybe we want to do more like um, the trial in Indiana Jones where you can see it if you kind of move your head in the right position. Maybe we can make it reflect light and if we just have the one directional light source in the sky or actually even if we just have select uh, lights that uh, can you, you can use to try and see the path. Maybe that's what we want to do. But if I walk straight ahead, we can see our green glowing spear thing. Maybe, I'm not sure, maybe green and rotating spear tip is a bit too much. <laughs> It looks menacing. I think that's not actually where I want to go. <laughs> that doesn't look like freedom or safety. Um, that looks like a boss battle, or picking it up is going to ensue a boss battle. 
So it might be a bit too much. Might want to make it look a little bit more friendly. But we're going to keep walking, and eventually we're going to walk off and fall down onto this plane. So that's why I left this plane here, was so that we could do this. So that's that's the general plan. That's the general plan. Let's get back into edit mode. Um, it is really confusing that the physics shape, the visible part is actually turning invisible because of how it lines up with the physics shape underneath. <laughs> um, so maybe it's time we do delete this plane. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a trigger. Because I've successfully learned how to do this. I didn't mention that. I showed you Dota World at the start of the stream um, in my pre-hype. I figured out... Okay, I didn't figure out. I managed, I'm really pleased, managed to successfully build a trigger and a teleport script so that if you fall into the lava in Dota World, you get teleported back to the spawn point. So it creates a, a kill plane where, okay, you got, you got killed because you went to the lava, so it sends you back to the exact coordinates of the spawn point, which is zero, zero, zero. Easy way to do that. <laughs> so we have a trigger volume. And what we're going to do is we're going to... We don't really want to scale it um, so much as we want to make it a a floor. Uh, I made it 1,000. That's not what I wanted to do. I just wanted 100. 100. Oops. That's... Um, is that what I wanted? I can't tell which way that's going. Let's just make it 50 <laughs> and 50 and 1. Oops. Okay, okay, that, okay, Z made it taller. Z definitely made it taller. Um, there's just this weird visual effect where I can't quite tell what I'm looking at here. Alright. So I'm going to bring it up above the plane. I can't tell how deep this is. That looks really deep. Oh man, there's like a confusing visual effect on light here. I'm kind of confused by this. Oh, and now, okay. Great, that's, <laughs> that's confused me more. Can we have less than 1 as a value? Can we make it thinner? Wait, that's 1.5, 1, 0 0.5. And I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to move the properties over here. You can't see what I'm doing, can you? Um, all right. So where are... Uh, let's turn physics shapes back on. So we can see our path. And we can see how close it is to the path. So it appears to be a little bit of a ways down. But maybe not far down enough. So let's scoot. Scoot you. We definitely want you to, if you fall, we want you to give that free fall feeling of, oh no, I messed up, I messed up so bad. So we're going to put it just below the plane. I think that's a decent fall distance. Because uh, we also don't want people waiting forever. Great. Now we're going to search for teleport. Under purchased? Yeah, teleport local. Which I believe is a default script. I believe I did not buy this. I did buy a teleport script, but I didn't buy that one. So I'm going to drag this onto the object. So as long as the script lives in the object, it's fine. So actually the channel changing if, uh, script that we had in Dota World that I showed you at the start where I could go slash channel 1, slash channel 2 and hop between, in real time, hop between different Twitch streams. It still amazes me. Um, that script lived inside the main TV screen. Um, it could have been in any of the TV screens, but so I could find it again, <laughs> I just put it in the main screen. So I'm going to put this in the trigger. And it's a teleport local. And what it's going to do is it's going to teleport them to these coordinates. We don't want those coordinates. I don't know what they are. We're going to click on the spawn point and find out what its coordinates are and tell you to teleport you there. So if you fall, you go back to the start. That's what we're creating here. So the spawn point properties. Spawn point is 0, minus 30, and 62. So 0.62 is probably small enough that it's going to be fine. So we'll tell you, say 0, minus 30, 0. My, I said minus 30. There we go. Okay. Hitting enter. It didn't like that. Great. Um, oh, do you know what's maybe messing this up is the fact that its scale is is 6. Its scale doesn't need to be 6. There we go. Now it looks right. That's where I messed up. Because it's the extents you want to change to make it bigger, not its scale. 
a little little counterintuitive. There we go, 100, 100, and the value of 1. Um, that's not quite enough to cover the whole plane, so we'll do 200 and 200. All right, so this is the base floor of our map, basically. So we're going to save this, we're going to build it out, and I'm going to show you it working. So we're going to build. Do, 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 do. Building, building, building. It's fun doing quick demos with things that don't have 325 media screens in them. Doesn't it build so much faster, guys? <laughs> than ridiculously ambitious media experiences. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk straight up the side here. And there we go. Uh, we broke my avatar's legs. I have no idea to know if we're standing on the platform or what happened. Okay, that was weird. He kind of straightened himself out. Um, let's try that again. Okay, this is a reproducible error. That's a problem. Um, so apparently it breaks your legs. <laughs> Gives you a little squat walk. <laughs> like you're trying to limbo under something. Okay. Um, Alright, that might... Do you know what? It's probably because it's... I put zero zero and minus thirty, so it's spawning you in the platform, not um not slightly above it. So let's make it Z five. Um so this should at least be more like something like, okay, I've I'm going to maybe fall a little bit, we'll see. Um but I shouldn't spawn directly into the wall into the floor. So let's try this again. Let's try this iteration and see how it goes. Here, Brianna's joined the watch room. Gonna keep an eye on things for me. Thanks very much, Brianna. Alright, let's see how the fall goes this time. There we go. See, so we actually fell onto the spawn point. So five is actually pretty far. Um, let's see. Yeah, I have about a half an avatar's height to fall there. Maybe a full avatar's height, three quarters of an avatar. Um, but we could definitely get away with more like a two. Um, and then, oh, okay, so we just run there. Oh, no. You fall down. So actually that fall down was a bit too much. That actually looked like lag, didn't it? Like doing this, it just looks like I have lag. <laughs> it's not enough of a, oh, I fell. It just looks laggy. So let's move that plane down. Um... Let's move this much further down. More like that, yeah. So that's a full. <laughs> that's a full, but that's not a half an hour full. Cool. Okay, so, and we also want to lower these things um, so that the same height of this. So this is at height zero, right? What height is this thing at? It's also height zero? I can't be right. Oh, I guess, well, the object, the, the top edge. The center of it's at zero, not the top edge of it. So we're going to have to eyeball this and get our camera into the right height. Okay, so there's the... There's our mage edge. Bringing this down a little bit. And then we're going to bring this here and have our glowing light. And let's take a... Let's just take a... A quick look, see if we get something maybe a bit more friendly looking. Maybe a giant beer. Should we just have a beer? <laughs> Would a giant beer bottle be more friendly than this terrifying, glowing... Terrifying, glowing, s rotating spearhead? Um, come over here. Come on. There we go. Look, if it wasn't clear that you meant to go this way, there's also a giant beer bottle. <laughs> okay. There we go. So, here's another little trick I learned. Uh... When you're trying to, you know, I was trying to put beer bottles on tables in Dota World, and it'd be like up a bit, down a bit, up a bit, down a bit, down a bit, up a bit, down a bit, up a bit, down a bit, build, and they'll fall over because they wouldn't, they would either like fall a little or they'd be in the table and spawn out a little. So you go, you go up here to options, you go to surface snap, and then you just click and drag it, and it just snaps to the surface top. Duh. <laughs> that was so simple. Do turn it off again though, because it turns it on for everything, and it's kind of not really what you want. But it's how you want to put beer bottles on a table. Cool. All right. Now, I, I'm i interested in seeing if it's conceivably possible to take these transparent platforms and mess around with their materials. 
to maybe make them a little reflective, just like a little less than completely clear, just a little bit less uh, completely obvious. Uh, maybe if we tinted them, like really tiny. Mask threshold, mask softness, UV scale. I'm going to change the UV scale. Okay, I don't see any change. Let's put that back. Materials. UV scale, one. Was it at one? I don't even remember. Probably. We can tint it. So we can make it... So pure white's going to be clear. So we could make it just the teeniest bit blue. Just a teeny... Nope, not... That may not have been the right material to do that to. Oh wait, no, there's only one material. Uh, so let, let's just make it straight up blue and see if we can see it uh, at all. Hmm. Hmm. This is, is uh, not the solution I thought it would be. we we'll make it black. Okay, no, it has, I guess it just doesn't have the ability to be, to be tinted at all. It's completely invisible. Um, we can make it sound different. Which is interesting. Let's make it sound like water. That's just going to be a little bit trippy. Uh, let's make it sound like water. Um, friction bounce. That's kind of for it as an object. Hmm. Custom texture file. I don't have custom textures. S ooh. Standard two-sided, standard and alpha mask, standard two-sided and alpha mask, standard emissive. Okay, if it's emissive, it'll glow a little, right? Right? Default emissiveness map, metalness map, roughness map. Converting transparent platform. Okay, it glows. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing I could do. All right, it glows now. Let's make it not very intense at all. Let's make it... Hmm. Okay, it seems to have turned it into what is essentially... um Like, I think that conversion thing basically took a ping and turned it into a JPEG. So, you know, with a ping, you can have a transparency. You turn it into a JPEG, this just turns white, the background. Um, so I thought I'd taken that object and given it an emissive quality. But it appears to have removed its transparency in that process. So that's not not really what I wanted. Um, I guess if we put this back to zero, that will confirm that. If, I mean, that's what the setting was before, and it was invisible. It's no longer invisible. So let's see if the big question then is, can it go back? Because uh, it was standard and alpha mask, right? Does it go back? No. All right. All right. We, we messed up. We have messed up. So... What are we going to do? We can turn it into a media surface. What? What? <laughs> it's a media surface now? That's how you make a media surface? That's so easy. You just take any material and you can turn it. You can turn a sofa into a media surface. I can turn that beer bottle into a media surface. That's kind of great. All right. The first platform's going to be a video. <laughs> it has now thusly been decided. Um, let's, uh, let's do something crazy, crazy with that. Let's have a look at, uh, da, 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 da. opening up Google. Go and actually tell you what, got a better idea. I already have some saved scene settings and I'm going to put in this URL, which is my, should be my stream. So I'm going to do audio preview. <laughs> and there it is. There's my first build stream loading up right there. <laughs> In a kind of weird, glowy, emissive thing. 
All right, that's done. We're actually wrapping up in five minutes. So let's, oops, I accidentally tapped my motion into this box. So let's, let's soldier on. Um, let's delete you, take a copy of this one by going control D, dragging it back. And then let's continue to build things out. So you walk forward and then you go, whoops, and you fall. So wait, hold on, let's close you, properties, uh, zero, there we go. Nice and straight edged kind of thing. So build that out again and rotate you 90 degrees yeah all right a little bit a little bit forward and bring you a little eh, tiny tiny little bit right there there we go okay so it's coming it's coming together as a kind of maze like experience and you know what I just realized a better way to do this might actually be to start with our end point here and have f four platforms and then see uh, see how we want those four platforms to arrive so I definitely want one kind of joke kind of pull one where just as you get there, you get teleported to uh, another, like, completely other corner of the of this maze. So let's put a platform over here, and we'll create another teleport trigger. Oh, I've still got a bottle set up. There we go. Put a trigger here. Um. Yeah, that seems about right. A one by one block, that should be good enough. And then it's gonna teleport you to over here. Oh wait, no, I haven't given it the script yet. So teleport, and under purchase, teleport local into the cube, and then it teleports you to, what are these coordinates? Uh, 45, 14, and then we'll put a two. Oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. No, oh, damn. These ones. 45. Four, oh, wait, that's... No, not those ones. Damn. Oh, they all look kind of the same way, because I'm not reading this bit, I'm just reading it down. <laughs> all right, 45. Delete, delete, delete. Oh, no, don't press dots. 45. 14. Yes, 3 as a default height. Cool, so let's, probably not how this maze is going to look, but let's uh, make it so we can test out this teleport script. And teleport again, I mean duplicate again, duplicate again. I think these are a little bit not perfectly straight, but there we go. So let's see how this looks. Let's see how this goes. Visiting now. Cool, so we're gonna spawn on a flat platform here. Um... Hmm... Kind of forgotten a little... Oh wait, I can cheat. <laughs> I can cheat by teleporting because I'll be able to see where the edges are. Now, um, that is something we've not talked about is like, well, can't someone just teleport through my maze? Well, we're still looking for a good labyrinth, maze, dungeon crawling, puzzle solving, escape room experience. Um, whether people can beat it by cheating or not <laughs> is not a uh, criterion. Okay, so we made it this far. We're so close to our glowing sphere and beer bottle, and then, bloop, we get teleported. Oh, and we fell over. Oh, we landed. We didn't delete the plane, so we don't get teleported back to start, so we're going to run off the edge of the plane. Uh, teleported back to start. There we go. <laughs> so that's it. That's my idea. That is my announcement for our contest. 
So uh, let me go over that one more time and I will get ready to release the blog post. So, in case you missed the start of the stream, or you missed the early part of the stream, we're announcing a new contest today. The contest is to um, build a labyrinth-like experience. And we've got some great prizes. And the contest starts today. So, going to read it over again. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you want to tune out at this point, I understand. But I'm going to read it again so that everyone gets the announcement, and then I'll put out this as a blog post, and I'll push it out on social media, and I'll post it on Discord, and then mm. maybe first I'll come into the experience and answer your questions, and then I'll release the blog post. Okay. From the top. Greetings, traveler. Perhaps you'd be willing to help an old man. You see my magic necklace that protects me from evil spirits on this road has fallen down into this well, into the ruins of an abandoned and not at all haunted temple. Could you fetch it for me? I promise you the journey will be exciting. Labyrinths, mazes, and dungeons have long since trapped a wayward adventurer. Some travelers do see their trials through to the end, and even find freedom once again. But the path is difficult, and it is not always clear. For this Sansar contest, we are challenging you to build a labyrinth experience for Sansar. This does not have to be a maze or a labyrinth in the very literal sense of the word, where they are bound by their real-world distinctions, such as in some etymology, a labyrinth has to be a continuous path, uh, or a maze you know, only being branching paths. You can get creative with this. Be creative and adventurous in the path that you put before these wayward avatars. Interactivity and mind-bending brain teasers will be highly prized in this contest. The requirements for a labyrinth contest are that the user's avatar must get from point A to point B. That's the basic goal. In order to get to point B, the user must complete some form of challenge or puzzle in order to reach point B, such as completing the path of a maze, or solving a series of puzzles or riddles, whatever you kind of want to put there as a challenge. Uh, and then finally, the criteria is that it should be clear when the user has successfully reached point B and has completed the challenge. For a really good labyrinth experience, we want to see a sense of wonder and exploration. We want to give users that aha moment of beating a good brain teacher. Brain? Ah, oh, I said brain teacher again. <laughs> We're not talking about brain teachers. I can be every teacher as a teacher for the brain. We're looking for that aha moment of beating a good brain teaser. We want to see a creative use of Sansa that pushes the boundary of what, a pla of what the platform can do. And we want to see a subversion of the user's expectations, something that seems really obvious, and then, oh, a twist, something clever, something new, something ingenious, innovation, clever, clever girl. Uh, these experiences will be judged on complexity, creativity, interactivity, and enjoyment. And they'll be judged by a panel of Sansar staff. Uh, the grand prize winner will win five thousand US dollars. The second place winner will win the one year subscription to a three D modeling tool of their choice, being either Maya or ZBrush. It's your choice. And then the third place winner will get a Oculus Rift VR headset with the Oculus Touch controllers and sensors included. The deadline is Sunday the 17th of June at 5 p.m. California time, so PDT. Uh, only entries submitted before that deadline will be accepted. We'll be releasing the Google form to submit your entries after this stream. And there are no limits to how many experiences you can enter. However, they cannot be pre-existing experiences. So it has to be a brand new experience created after today, uh, Friday, May 18th. So its birthday has to be today or later, before June 17th. Um, so nothing existing. Uh, it has to be a new experience, and it has to be published before the deadline, as well as submitting it in the entry form. And only entries submitted into the form will be accepted. 
So you can't say, oh, I put it up and I put it up for the contest. It's got to be in the form by the deadline, okay? Good luck, Dungeon Masters and Labyrinth Crasters. Uh, I hope you have fun with this contest. And I'll be jumping into the experience right now to answer any of your direct corrections. Direct questions. I'll be asking your, answering your questions. See you in a bit. Toodles. <laughs>